Hey guys, this is that one teacher and today we continue with our course where we talk about how to build a startup. As you can see from the picture, we started with business vision and mission of a startup, which I'll quickly recap. Business mission and vision are the reasons for existence of a company. Now this has to be looked at from a customer's perspective, like how we can improve our customer's life rather than the perspective of product that we sell. For example, Paramount Pictures, they produce movies. So technically their business mission should be we create movies. While it actually is, we create entertainment. This shift in mindset is important. Click on the I button to know more. Then we moved on to business opportunity. We found out where to look for business opportunity. Click on the I button that would be displayed later in this video to know more. Now we look at third and fourth aspect as shown in this picture. Looking at our capabilities, we try to figure out how to make profit from the opportunity presented to us. Then we look at goal formation, that is actionable steps to create profit. So let's get started. To take an advantage of an opportunity, we look at our internal strengths and weaknesses. Let's look at an example. Loanbright is an online mortgage company in USA. At its website, potential home buyers can get a personal list of lenders and available terms of loan according to their preferences. That is, if I want a mortgage at 8% rate of interest with 5 years of repayment time, I can find a lender who offer the services. At first, Loanbright made its money by selling the home buyers data to high-end mortgage lenders including Wells Fargo Home Mortgage, Bank of America Mortgage and Chase Home Mortgage. These firms turned the data into leads for their sales team. This is how company made profit from providing its service to the borrowers like us. But soon the company started facing some issues. The company had to please each and every one of its big clients with providing large number of leads yet each was becoming tougher to satisfy, eating up their time and resources. These banks had strict criteria and Loan Bright was just not big enough company to generate the large number of leads that fit into their criteria. The company started losing money for more than 9 months and mind you, it was a small company at that time. So to make profits from its business opportunity was beyond their capabilities. This was their weakness. The company's top management then analyzed the market. They decided that instead of serving few selected clients, they would serve many more individual loan officers who responded to the company's Google ads and only wanted to buy few leads. So they went from small fish at the big pond to the big fish at a small pond. That is, their few hundred leads, which were very less for bigger clients, became more than enough for small, fragmented clients. That is, their weakness became their strength in smaller market. Let's take another similar example of DuckDuckGo. It is a search engine that competes with the giants like Google. Google is a company that people sometimes confuse with the entire internet. This means Google's omnipresence is not only a threat to DuckDuckGo, but its incapability to compete in the same space is also weakness for the company. Then why does the company even has 1.6% market share and why is it gaining popularity? This is because DuckDuckGo changed the game. It identified Google's weakness and made it their strength. It realized that in this rapidly overconnected world, people are valuing their privacy more and more, which Google can't provide. As you know, it tracks all your private information, including your search history, because this information helps the Google's real customer, which is not its user, but their advertisers who pay for this information so that they can make personalized ads. DuckDuckGo ensured that our IP address while searching on the internet won't be tracked, our personal information won't be stored and no selling of information to advertisers. This is how they played their strength or Google's weaknesses. So the lesson is, whenever you are entering a new market or making a new product, first you make your SWOT analysis. That is, identify your strength or make your competitor's weakness your strength so that you can maximize the profit from any opportunity. Let's make a SWOT analysis of Dell. Dell is one of the popular electronic manufacturing company that makes laptop, desktop and many more products. During its earlier years, Dell performed its SWOT analysis, which we are going to look at. Dell's strength was it can sell more effectively and efficiently directly to consumers than IBM and Compaq, its hardware competitor at that time, as it primarily used its website to directly connect with consumers. Dell's weakness, however, was that its brand was not as strong as it did not have enough well-established distribution channel as it was a small company at that time. Dell's opportunity was that consumer market was becoming more and more sophisticated and customers increasingly knew what they wanted. This was a great opportunity for Dell as it made customized PC which means user will get exactly the kind of RAM, hard drive, GPU they want in a single computer. Although Dell's threat was that it would fail to generate a big enough customer base because of strong and popular competitor and their well established channel partners that is distributor and retailer of PC that you see in your city which Dell did not have at that time. Now Dell uses strength to maximize its opportunity. 
Dell's business strategy combined direct sales, internet marketing, mass customization and just-in-time manufacturing to minimize delivery time and to capitalize on market opportunity it was offered. Businesses can evaluate their own strength and weakness by using the form like one shown on the screen. So all we can do is play our strength and improve on our weaknesses till they become our strengths. Once a company has performed a SWOT analysis, it can proceed to goal formation. Goals are the objective that has a deadline and a magnitude, that is, things to be achieved before deadline. Most business units pursue many objectives including profitability, sales growth, market share improvement, risk containment, innovation and reputation. The business unit set these objectives and then manages its decision based on the objectives, which is also called as MBO or managed by objective. For an MBO system to work, the company's objective must meet four criteria. First, they must be arranged hierarchically from most to least important. For example, a business unit's key objective for a specific period may be to increase the return from an investment, to increase profit by increasing revenue and reducing expenses, or it could be growth in revenue by increasing market share and prices. Now, a company cannot pursue all these goals simultaneously, so it has to choose what is important for the company at that period of time. Let's take an example. After iPhone's peak in sales in terms of volume or the number of units sold, of 231 million in 2015, Apple has never been able to surpass the number ever since. Not even in 2018 with its iPhone X that sold 217 million. The reason was because the lifespan of iPhones or smartphones have increased and people are not switching as often as they used to. But to keep investors happy, they changed their goal from increasing revenue to increasing profit. So the iPhone prices have increased dramatically to more than $1,000 now in 2020. Second, the objective should be quantitative whenever possible. For example, compare these objectives. First is to increase the return on investment and second is to increase ROI to 15% within 2 years, which is better. Next, goal should be realistic. Goal should arise from analysis of the business unit's opportunity and strength and not from visual thinking. Just like DuckDuckGo cannot compete with Google in the terms of search volume or the number of visitors, but they can compete with Google on privacy. Third, objective must be consistent. It is not possible to maximize sales and profit simultaneously because if we want to increase sales then we have to increase advertisement expenses or offer discount which will reduce our profit. Other important trade-off include deep penetration of existing market versus developing new markets, profit goal versus non-profit goal like market share, brand building, high growth versus low risk. There is also short-term profit versus long-term growth which is we can charge our customers or cut cost on quality raw materials which will eventually reduce the quality of our product to increase the profit. This is short term profit goals or we can invest in improving the quality of our product so that a customer purchases repeatedly and this will ensure long term growth or profit for our company. That's it for the video guys. Thank you for watching. 